Hello students, welcome to Cam Excel Biology. Today we will learn about diffusion. Let's have the look at the today's content. We will start our lecture by the introduction of diffusion and we will explore the scientific meaning and core concept of diffusion. Then we will see that how diffusion occurs and we will understand the step by step process of how diffusion take place. Then we will see the random movement of particles where we will learn that particle move randomly and how this leads to the diffusion. Then we have to see the diffusion in living cell and we will examine how students, how the substances move in and out of the cell by diffusion. Then we have to see the example of diffusion in human body and we will explore that how diffusion helps in breathing and nutrient exchange. We also have to see the diffusion in plants as well and we will examine that how diffusion helps in gases exchange and transport in plants. At last, we will see the factors affecting the rate of diffusion and we will identify what makes the diffusion slower and faster. So let's start our lecture by the introduction of diffusion. Have you ever noticed that whenever we spray a perfume in one corner of the room, the fragrance molecules, they spread all along the room and it reaches to the other corners of the room. Similarly, if we take a glass of water and we add any colored substance in it, we will notice that the color molecules, they will move through that water and it changes the color of water. Both of these phenomena are happening because of diffusion. So if we try to define the diffusion, we can say that diffusion is the movement of molecules from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration, down the concentration gradient. Here we have used a term concentration gradient. So in order to understand this term, we have to imagine a situation. For example, we have the particles on like we can say we have a higher concentration of particles on one side and we have a lower cons concentration of particles on another side. As you can see in these pictures that there is a clear cut difference in the concentration of these particles. There is a higher concentration on one side and there is a lower concentration on another side. So this creates a concentration gradient and it leads to the movement of molecules from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration. So we can say that molecules, they move down the concentration gradient and no energy is needed for such movement. That is the reason we also call it a passive movement of molecules. Then we have to see the random movement of particles. We know that in matter, the atom and the molecules, they are always moving. Now the movement could be different in different states of matter. For example, in solid, the particles, they can't move far, but in liquid and gases, the particle can move freely. So that is the reason diffusion could only happen in liquid and gases only. So when these particles, they move randomly, they collide with each other and this collision tends to step, spread themselves out as evenly as possible. So we can say that when these particles, they move randomly, the particles tend to spread themselves out as evenly as they can. Next we have to see that how diffusion works in a living cell. Let's imagine a living cell. Now this cell have to import a lot of useful substances. You know cell have to perform a lot of functions like cell have to grow, cell have to make new organelles, cell have to make new metabolites. So in order to continue its metabolic activity, cell have to import a lot of building blocks. For example, cell needs to import glucose and amino acids. How cell get these glucose and amino acids? Actually, these substances move into the cell through diffusion. Similarly, 
cell have to export a lot of waste material as well. We know that during the normal metabolic activity of cell, a cell produces a lot of metabolic waste which is not good for the cell. So cell have to export them out. For example, as you can see in this picture, there are a lot of mitochondria. So when a cell is respiring aerobically, these mitochondria, they're going to produce carbon dioxide. Now this carbon dioxide is a waste gas, which is not good for the cell. So cell have to get rid of this carbon dioxide. So how cell will do that? Cell will just simply export these carbon dioxide out of the cell through diffusion. So this is how cell maintains its normal homeostatic conditions. Next we have to see that how diffusion help us help the human body to, to do gases exchange. We know that we do gases exchange in our lungs. So we need to look at the particular structure in which the gas exchange actually happens. So the lungs have the bronchi and the bronchi have the alveoli and gas exchange actually happens in alveoli. So we have to see the structure of alveoli in more detail. For example, this is the alveoli and this is the air we actually which, are, which we are breathing in. So the air which we are breathing in, it contains 21% oxygen and 0.04% carbon dioxide. So when we breathe in this air, and when this air reaches to the alveolar space, there will be a lot of oxygen molecules inside the alveolar space. Similarly, the alveoli is surrounded by the blood capillary. So this blood is actually deoxygenated blood, which contains a lot of carbon dioxide, which is a waste gas. So our body have to export this carbon dioxide out of the body. We have to expel it out. So what happens here, as you can see, it there is a clear cut gradient for this carbon dioxide gas and for this oxygen gas. There is a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood than in the alveolar space. So the carbon dioxide molecule that diffuses from the blood and goes to the alveolar space. Now look at the oxygen molecules. There is a higher concentration of oxygen molecules in the alveolar space while there is a low concentration of oxygen in the blood capillary. So the oxygen molecules they will simply diffuses from the alveolar space and goes to the blood. So this is how gases exchange become possible in the alveoli. Then we will see th that how diffusion helps the plant to carry out their normal functions. This is the picture of a leaf of a plant. As we know that the leaf of the plant is actually the site for making food. And in leaf, these are the specialized palisade mesophyll tissues, which are actually responsible for doing photosynthesis. And we know that the photosynthesis is the process through which plants make their own food. But in order to make their own food, they have to get carbon dioxide. So there is a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in external environment outside of the leaf. So what happens here? The carbon dioxide, it enters into the leaf through these small openings called stomata and it goes to the palisade cells. And these palisade mesophyll cells, they do photosynthesis and they make their own food. And as a result of this, they also produces a lot of oxygen, which is a byproduct of photosynthesis. Now, the plant have to export this, these oxygen molecules out of the leaves. So, diffusion helps them to remove this oxygen from the leaf and the oxygen molecules, they move from inside of the plant to the outside of the plant. So, this is how gases exchange happens in plants. And this is how it helps them to carry out their normal functioning. Next, we have to see the factors which are affecting the rate of diffusion. So we will start with the temperature. Temperature is very important factor. You know that in, you also learned in chemistry that the kinetic energy of moving molecule is directly proportional to temperature. So higher temperature gives the particle more energy 
and particle move around more faster and particle diffuses more quickly as well. So let's imagine a situation. For example, here we have the particles which are at room temperature. So they will be moving normally and they will diffuse from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration. And we have another situation in which we are giving a higher temperature to these particles. Since we are giving a higher temperature, so these particles will be moving with more speed and more particle will diffuse from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration. So this is how temperature affects the rate of diffusion. The next factor which affects the rate of diffusion is concentration gradient. Higher the difference in the concentration between two places, higher will be the rate of diffusion. In order to understand this thing, we have to imagine a situation. Let's imagine this thing. We have two diagrams in which we can see that on the upper diagram, there are less, relatively less number of particles on the left side, while in lower diagram, there are more number of particles on the left side. So the, in upper diagram, the gradient is less steeper, while in lower diagram, the gradient is more, is more steeper. So there will be more rate of diffusion in the lower diagram and less particle will diffuse is in upper diagram. So you see, this is how it creates the difference in the rate of diffusion. So concentration gradient is very important factor. And the next factor which affects the rate of diffusion is actually the surface area. Larger the surface area, higher will be the rate of diffusion. Let's imagine a situation. We have the particles on one side of this diagram and they are separated by a large surface area as you can see. While more molecules with diffuses from left to the right side. But in another situation, if these particles are separated by a small surface area, you can see that less number of molecules will diffuse from left to the right. So this is how surface area plays a very important role in determining the rate of diffusion. So at last we have to see the assessment objectives which we have covered in today's lecture. So the first assessment objective which we have covered today was about the diffusion as the net movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration. And the second assessment objective which we have covered today was to state the energy for the diffusion. It comes from the kinetic energy of random movement of molecules and ions. And the third assessment objective which we covered today was to state that some substances move into and out of the cell by diffusion through the cell membrane. The fourth assessment objective which we have covered was to describe the importance of diffusion of gases and solutes in living organism. And the last assessment objective which we covered was to investigate the factors that influence diffusion. And we, we were limited to the surface area, temperature and concentration gradient.